Would you like to make one of these cute art journals? They're really simple. You might think they're difficult, but they're really not. And I've used no specialist equipment. As you can see, it fastens, it opens really easily, and you can put as many pages in as you like in all your little signatures or booklets of pages. So we're going to make the red and blue one here and let's get started. You can see, let's go. So the first thing you're gonna need is a cover. Now I'm using fabric paper and there should be a link in the description and on the screen for you now if you want to make your own fabric paper, but you could just use some card. So you need yours to be 12 inches wide by seven inches high, whether you're using the fabric paper or the card, and that is gonna make a nice cover. Then you need to think about your pages. Now you can make these out of whatever you like, but they do need to be nine inches wide by seven inches high. Now I've made most of mine out of this watercolour paper because I find it's really practical. It's strong enough to take paint, to stick things to, to do whatever I want really. And you just want to make as many as you want. Now I've made eight of these watercolour pages and I've also made two pages that are scrapbook paper. Now they're a little bit smaller purely because that's the size they were, not because they need to be. So as you can see in total, I've made 10 pages. So that's what fits nicely, but you can make more or you can make fewer. So once you've got your pages, we need to think about what we're going to do with them. So they're going to be folded in half to make your little booklets, your signatures. So what we're going to do is mark all the way down the center. Now we're going to score it. Now you can have lots of fancy tools and if you have, please use them now but you can just use the blade of some scissors and gently score one side. You're not trying to rip through, you just want to make sure you fold it in the correct place and then fold it in half. And that is your first page. And you're then going to repeat that for all of them, including any ones that are different sizes or whatever. What matters is that you fold it up the middle so get your scoring done and get them folded just repeat for all of them and then once you've got them all folded and you're happy with them we're going to make those little signatures so if you're following on exactly the same as me you're going to put five together so for me that's four watercolor pages and one of the scrapbook pages you can put them however you like this is where you get creative and then once they're together, they're ready for attaching. So let's get back to our cover. First thing we're going to do here is consider exactly the same process. Which way round do we want it? Where do we want our little flap? And then we're going to score this so that it folds nicely. So from the side where you want your flap, you need to measure two inches and score it. Now, if you're using fabric paper like me, you need to be a little bit careful or you can just rip your paper off. So just score it gently. It is purely to get that first fold. We're never going to have a tight fold, so we don't really need to score it. You could just mark it, but I find a gentle scoring works best. And then you're going to repeat that process, but five inches from the other end. And these curves, not curves at all, these bends that you're going to make, these folds are going to form the outside of your art journal. Okay, so you might look at them, you might feel the need to go back and redo them. But if you're happy, you've just got those two marks and then fold along them. Now, as you'll see, it's fabric paper. It doesn't necessarily immediately fold exactly along that line. Just take a little bit of time and get those folds so that they're there and nice and you don't need them crisp, they're never going to be. But you do want to be sure where they are. And you can see how your journal is going to look. And if you're happy with it how it is with those corners, that's absolutely fine. 
but you will have noticed that I clip the corners of mine. Now I use a little corner clipper like this and I'll put a link in the description below. You could just round them with scissors or you could leave them just as ordinary corners. But I just think it completes it when you cut the corners. So now you've got everything ready to think about how on earth we're going to assemble it. Now the answer is we're going to use pamphlet stitching and it's really simple. So get one of your signatures and fasten all your pages together. You don't want anything moving about. It's really important at this stage. And then we're going to mark along the fold. So get your ruler. It's seven inches tall. So at three and a half inches in the center, we're going to make a mark. And then one inch in from either end or two and a half inches from the center, whichever one you like to measure. So you should have those three little dots on your page. So now you need to turn those into holes through which you can sew. Now you can get something called a pokey tool. I think everyone around the world calls it a pokey tool and that's a great tool to use. It's also a good idea to go into a block of foam. I've done neither of those things, but I like to make these crafts accessible. So if all you've got is an embroidery needle or similar, then that's what you're going to use like me. So you push the needle through and then you wiggle it about because you really want the hole to be a little bit bigger. Remember, you're going to put a bigger needle through here with some twine on. So you want a nice big hole. And then once you're happy with it, repeat with the other one. Then you come to your cover. Now you've done a fold at five inches and what you're now going to do is do a line a sixteenth of an inch on either side. So you'll see I measure a sixteenth of an inch either side of the fold at the top and at the bottom and then draw those in, draw between them so you get a nice straight line. And that line is what you're going to put your holes in. So they end up an eighth of an inch apart, these lines, an eighth of an inch apart. So if you're doing three signatures, they want to be an eighth of an inch apart. So this time you're going to measure the center, which this time will be at four inches. And then you're going to measure two and a half inches out from that or one and a half inches in from either end. So be careful. That's not the same as the pages because the pages are smaller than the journal cover. So I'm just going to leave that with you to think about for a moment. Rewind if that takes a little bit of thinking about. But these holes have to match up with the signature holes. And then guess what? We're going to make those holes exactly the same way as we made them in the signature. And then once we've got all these holes, it's going to be time to assemble the journal. We're going to get all those pages in. So I'm using some twine. You could use some linen thread. You just want something nice and strong and thread it on your needle. You don't need too long a length. You'll see as we go along that it's just for one signature. So go in through your signature and out through the journal cover through the central hole. Leave a nice long tail because you're going to use that to tie a knot and then come back through either the top or the bottom hole on the same straight line. So remember we're keeping along that same straight line and back through the signature. You'll see me wiggling because I haven't got my hole quite big enough so it doesn't want to come through and if you have that problem just relax don't worry about it. Give it a good wiggle. It'll come. And then once it's through, you want to pull it so it lies flat. You're not pulling it really tight or you'll just pull it right through. And then back in through the hole at the other end. Through the signature and through the cover. Again, just make sure you're going through the right hole on that cover. And then you're going to bring your needle back through from the outside to the inside through that middle hole again. Now try and make sure your needle pops up on the opposite side of that twine to the start. So you'll get a string on either side of that twine that's there. You see me pull it across? That's to make sure I get it one on either side. It just helps, that's all. It's tidier, just makes it a little bit tighter and neater. So then we don't need the needle anymore. 
you can see it's nice and trim and tidy on the outside you just want it nice and tight and then you're just going to knot those two tails together and trim them down to whatever size you want I leave mine I think quite long I think they're quite I don't know what's the word I'm looking for a bit rustic I suppose I like it anyway and there you go you've got a whole signature in there and now you just need to repeat for the other one so just do exactly the same as we've just done and if you're doing three signatures do it three times so I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please could you give me a thumbs up below so that it spreads to more people and please do give us comments below on how you're finding it what you're thinking of putting in your art journal whether you take it out and about with you we can all learn from each other about art journaling it's not something I've done a lot of but I absolutely adore these journals so once you've got your signatures however many inside your journal and you've tidied all your twine all that's left to do is to be able to fasten it because at the moment you've got a cover but it is just going to spring open but you can really see how it's going to look so the first thing you need to do is make a hole to attach the twine to so we're going to start with the flap that flap there and we're going to mark the center of it because you don't want it towards the top or towards the bottom so just get your ruler back out and at four inches because remember it's eight inches tall you're just going to make a mark now I'm just making a small pencil mark and I haven't measured how far in from the edge but you'll be able to see and you just want to be sensible so you don't leave it too thin that it that it rips now we're going to punch a hole but before we do that I'm going to put these hole reinforcers on I don't know if many people use them anymore but when I was younger we used to use hundreds of these at school but if you can find any anywhere they're great just for reinforcing any holes you punch now if white's all right for you that's great I've decided to make mine red now if you want to color yours you can use a permanent marker like I'm doing you could use an ink pad whatever you want to color them in and sometimes it can just make them pop or it can make them blend in depending what you're going for but what you do want is two of these we're going to put one on the outside of the cover and one on the inside so once you're happy they're dry if you've painted them or colored them in it's time to fix one on so you're going to stick one on the outside exactly on the mark that you made and then you need to punch the hole so I'm just using a little hole punch I'll put a link below if you want to see what one's like and where you can buy one and that's it a simple little hole and then once you've got the hole obviously you can put your other hole reinforcer on the inside and so it's ready for your twine so all we need to do now is work out how long a length we need so hold your journal closed and then we're going to wrap the twine around it to work out the length so again this is really a personal choice but I like to take my twine and wrap it round four times okay that's three that's four and then pull off a long length so that I have got plenty what I don't want is to be short of length I'd rather waste a little bit at the end and then once you've got your great big long length and you're thinking this is way too long trust me it isn't fold it in half because you want that loop that you get and that is what you're going to put through the hole on the front of your journal and then thread all the twine through that loop and that should secure it nicely onto the flap of your journal and then again we're going to close the journal and this time we're going to wrap it around twice which is how I like mine to go I think it makes a nice secure fastening 
and then we need to fasten the journal closed while we do the next step so I'm using these big bulldog clips you can use whatever you've got a giant paper clip it doesn't matter it's just to hold it in place and to just hold your twine there so it's not trying to escape now we're going to put some beads on that will allow us to fasten it now I've picked these beads and I'm putting three on each one whatever beads you like whatever beads you've got you can put one on you can put five on this is entirely up to you but you can see I'm doing my little design here so because one of mine's got a narrow hole I'm gonna to have to use a needle you might be able to just thread yours straight through but take one of the ends of your twine and put your beads on and then simply do a knot now how long you want these is up to you I tend to make it about the width of the journal so that they sit nicely and they're not dangling everywhere now do as many knots as you need and this is entirely going to depend on your beads and how big the hole is in there so just keep knotting it until you're happy and once you're happy your beads are properly secure and they're definitely not coming off you can trim the twine up and then it'll look really neat and nice And then you're going to repeat that with the other one you want them ideally to be the same length mine never are quite the same length but i don't think that matters but a similar length and then once you've got them both the way you fasten your journal is simply to tuck the beads under the string or twine that you got wrapped around tight around your journal so once i've got mine not fastened i'll show you that So we're going to try and tuck it in now you really need to take your clips off or you'll find it is very very tight <laughs> so all you do is tuck your beads in and that's your art journal all secure and all ready to take on your travels so thank you for watching please subscribe if you've enjoyed it and watch some more of my videos and see them as they arrive and please leave comments below to let us know how you use your art journal and give us some ideas let's all share Thank you for watching and have a great day art journaling.